coverage of the social media. Okay. A whole, a whole lot of success stories can be attributed to the social media. Just like we can tell you a lot of terrible things the social media has actually done to individuals and to their businesses. I'll give a few examples as we go ahead. So by definition, what is social media? It's a collection of, it's a collective term for websites and applications that focus on communication, community-based inputs and interactions, content sharing, collaborations, just name it. And you can see on the screen, these are different applications. This is inexhaustive. There are still many more. They're churning them out on per second billing. You can see the Twitter. You can see YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Skype. Just name it. They are everywhere. And we all, if you go to my phone, I'm an iOS person, iPhone person. I have tons of applications. Tons, you can open seven, eight, ten pages, you're still opening on. And these are applications that are for our use. Social media bequeathed that on us. But these are also applications that can put us, that can open us for a lot of risk. So how do we manage that? Okay, so people use social media to stay in touch and interact with their families, friends, and various communities, okay? You can see different people sitting in that hall, and you can see all the applications they are open to. If, we, if I ask us right now to stop, and let's look at our phones, you'll be sure that at least 20 applications that are running in this room. That is the power of the social media. So businesses also use the social media applications to market and promote their products and track their customer concerns. A lot of things are done with the social media in terms of business. You can imagine when Nigeria decided to put a ban on the use of Twitter in this country. As at the first 100 days of that ban, our nation has lost 246. One billion naira just for one action. No, this is just internet metrics, but it is near reality. And we went beyond 100 days. So you can put value to what we lost. You can get on social media, or you can use the social media. They use it to share critical information, just like we all do, share information. We remember what happened during the NSAS in Nigeria last year, uh, two years ago. Is it, no, it's la it was last year. It was last year. And NSAS is there. Information was shared around the world. People were sharing things. The government was putting out their posts to, to give their own version and try to co correct, correct some of the narratives. That is what social media can do for you. The argument about open grazing and local policing came up, it's still on. And we see all sorts of things on the social media. Some are true, some are half-truths, some are downright lies. So when you put out the lie, the government comes up to give what they think is their truth. And other people will pick them up and say, no, you did not tell the complete truth. So that is what social media can do. Um, during COVID also, a lot of information was given out with, I mean, through social media. We're getting daily counts all over the world. When the vaccines came, as people were taking them, we can monitor all this. We cannot just get this information, but for the social media. I like this, um, this image on my right here, the red one. During the NSAS crisis, I was talking to someone last week and I was telling the person, your media presence is important and what you do. And I said, take for example, type my name, Jide Olufuyi, into Google. And it opened up several pages. 
But something caught my attention. This particular um, image in red, I spoke to my son. My last son is overseas. And during answers, he was telling me my generation and the generation before us put us in all this mess. And the crisis was going on. You guys were not talking, you know? And after we finished, it was a Saturday that day. After we finished that call, my conscience could not handle it. And I decided to make this. I did not pick this from anywhere. I made it. So when I saw it on the internet last week, I said, oh, internet never sleeps. Because I just quickly sat down on my system that day, and I made this post, and I said, NSAS, hashtag NSAS, complete police reform. You don't do UNA. Make, um, OK, I can't read this now. Um, but Nigeria now we own several hashtags. I just created them and put this out there. And I saw this. If you go to my page today, it is there. If it's a good one, it is there. If it's a bad one, it is there. That is social media for you. So social media networks like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, et cetera, can topple governments, can create chaos. We all saw what Donald Trump did in the US, power of the social media. Even before they stormed the meeting, he tweeted, and these are information haunting him today. Social media can wreck havoc. Social media can make you. There are people that are billionaires today in Nigeria, quiet billionaires, people in their 30s and 40s. They are cleaning up every day, legal, genuine businesses, power of the social media. Just like some people too are making their billions. The, what is this guy that is uh, in the US? Hush puppies of this world, social media. They made their own funny billions too. So it's a tool we cannot just throw away. It's with us, but while it is with us, just like my president said here, what do we do with it? We must manage our own side of it. We are exposed by the social media and we need to be able to contain our exposure. We need to be able to manage what we give out and what people are seeing. There are so many advantages for social media. You reach large audiences. You can, um, you can have direct communication to your audiences. You can build your brand. You can solidify your brand identity. You can increase your brand activity. You can do all sorts of wonderful things with the social media, just like we've said here now. But let's go to the next slide. Let's look at the downsides of social media. I'll pause here and take a little time to talk about this. There are so many disadvantages to the social media, and that is why there is need for social governance. I'll come to that in a minute. You risk inaccurate, you, you have the risk of inaccurate reporting. We remember during the lockdown, when the controversy was on about 5G, and uh, people were saying 5G sucks your blood um, and all sorts of things, social media. But today, a lot of us in some of our modern day devices were carrying 5G. We did not die. But some of us even participated in some of those discussions then sharing our truths. Social media can cause a lot of confusion. You know, the, the world is looking beyond 5G. We are saying we should stay 3G and 4G, and we want to be like them. So to, for you to measure up to present day reality, you need to follow through. Social media can put you in trouble. It can open you up for potential embarrassment. A case in point is when some time ago, a particular hashtag was created, why I stayed. And that hashtag was, to, was made in support of people that su suffered domestic violence. And these people that suffered domestic violence, when you write your story, what you suffered, you put that hashtag so that your story can be found. Then a pizza company decided to get over Zillios, their handlers. Um, somebody tweeted and said, um, why I stayed, did you know pizza? Did you know pizza is popular? Just like Domino pizza. The Giorno Pizza is popular, and it put why I stayed by the Giorno Pizza. 
and the internet went above in less than two hours. People said that company was insensitive to the plight of people that suffer domestic violence. It was a great trouble. The CEO had to come on, they had to find experts to manage the situation for them. At the end of it all, they lost some money. That is social media. It can be time consuming and a distraction for individuals and businesses. A nation can be set on fire, just like I said. You remember what happened in 2012 in Nigeria when we had the fuel subsidy crisis, Jonathan? The volume of information that came out during that crisis. I don't think we have ever seen anything like that, and I don't think we will see anything like that too. A lot of things came out, power of social media. People were going to offices to snap documents and they put them out there. Things that could bring this com country completely to zero. You know, that is social media for you. It also decreases face-to-face -face communication skills. A lot of us, we are not, if you bring people to interviews now, they are lost. Or if you get on the internet now, you say, I'm going to interview you through Zoom, or I want us to chat. People will do well. But when they come back, or you tell them to write, a lot of our kids cannot even write proper English again. They are using their mnemonics and all sort of, you know, shortcuts. TTYL, talk to you later. BRB, be right, be right back. LOL, laughing out loud. All sort of, and you're writing an essay or comprehension in an exam. It's very easy for you to throw in some of this. People do not write your, they write you are. You know, they, you know a lot of things. There are so many, the younger people here will understand what I'm talking about. That is what social media is doing and we need to put a gauge. So you will agree with me that it takes a lot of effort to build, but it is so easy to destroy. Social media can build you, can build your companies, can build your organizations, and it can destroy you just like now. That is why the corporate world needs protection from this monster, in quotes now, social media. Let's go on. Let's talk now about social media governance. It's about understanding the risk which this social media poses to organizations and having confidence that you are appropriately managing this risk. You are putting out efforts to mitigate against some of this risk. You are find, looking for a way to manage your exposure. That is social media governance. Use of social media by people and organizations is increasing rapidly and the potential benefits of a successful, successful social media strategy or campaign is key. Social media governance is much more than just a policy. A lot of people think it is a policy, but it is beyond a policy. It goes beyond that. You know, you're looking at policies, you're looking at guidelines, you're looking at a lot of things that goes into putting that governance scheme together. Training, the legal perspective, data, security, continuity, so many things goes into it. And by the time you take care of all this, you will have put together a proper social media governance strategy for your group. While social media policy defines how companies, company employees should engage via social media channels, a governance is a model, I mean, a governance model is a bundle of policies, like I said, guidelines, processes, educational resources, and all that. So company in this case, like I also mentioned, are groups, organizations, corporate entities. Is it a church? Is it um, a business? Is it the government? You know, we all must protect ourselves. Now, let's look at a few stories of some of the biggest social media management nightmares that has happened. After that, we shall look at the elements that make for a robust and solid social media. Uh, framework, social media as a uh, framework. If you think if you think safety is expensive, that is what we say in the final business. Safety, putting proper safety in place is one million times over. 
So that is why we must always consider safety. United Airlines, they had a PR crisis in 2017. They had a flight that was going from Chicago to Louisville, and the flight was overbooked. They needed to bring in, they needed to bring out four passengers because the flight was filled up and the staff needed to be on board. So they said, guys, we have this situation. Can we have three or four volunteers come out of this aircraft? We will give you $400. We'll provide hotel accommodation for you and a ticket for you to fly tomorrow. We need to accommodate some staff on this flight. Nobody budged. Everybody kept quiet. They announced severally and the flight was being delayed. And you know the US thing, the, the work to schedule. So they said, well, we may have to force three people out of this aircraft. We'll randomly pick three. You, sir, please stand up. We need you to leave this aircraft. You, sir, and they picked three people. Two stood up, pick up their stuff, and left. But one elderly man said, I'm not going anywhere. And he said, I am traveling to attend to a patient that needs me. I am not leaving this aircraft. Security was called in. They manhandled him. They picked him out of the place, threw him out of the aircraft. Someone was recording. Just like as we're speaking now, some of you may even be recording me. Someone recorded it and put it out into the air. By the time it got out in less than two hours, there was chaos. Everybody was saying United Airlines, this, that, and a lot of confusion came on. Then the funny MD, the CEO, because they did not have, or maybe I suspect they did not have proper social media governance strategy in place. He came on and he apologized. And look at this apology. He said, this is an uncertain event to all of us here at United. I apologize to customers. Our team is moving with a sense of urgency to work with the authorities and conduct our own detailed review of what happened. We also reached out to this passenger to talk directly to him and further address and resolve the situation. He put that note out and that put him in more trouble. There's a lot of holes. I tell my children, if you fall into a hole, stop digging. The moment you get into trouble, don't do anything. Pause, cry for help. But if you sit, if you fall into a hole and you're struggling, what happens to you? You're going deeper. So if you fall into a hole, if you did not take, if you do not take anything away from here today, remember that if you fall into a hole, stop digging. You get home, your wife tells you you have done this, you have done that. That is not the time to lie. You pause and make up your mind whether to tell her the truth or how do you want to manage the situation. And the other way around to your husband comes to you. Okay, so that nobody calls me auntie, whatever, you know? So this man made this speech and everybody said the statement is very disrespectful. It was emotionless. You're not talking about the man that was traumatized. You're not talking about the person who they were going to attend to that possibly could lose his or her life. You're talking about the inconvenience and all that. United Airlines lost 800 million dollars in revenue due to this incident. So learning point, when you are ready to apologize publicly, say it with passion and from your heart. Do not use formal language, some form, any formal language or sound like a typical press release. Guys, I am sorry we did not start this event on time. Please bear with us. Now we go straight to the point. No, people left their homes. People are waiting for you to start an event. You are starting late. Can you come out and show emotion? So those are some of the things companies will train their employees to think and to put into social media governance schemes so that when you are relating, when you are interfacing with the external community, 
you know how to attend to them. Somebody comes in and say, this particular product is useless. It's not working. And somebody from the company who is trained to handle it can come on and say, we're very sorry, sir, that this did not serve you well. I have just instructed our research and development people, they will reach out to you and we'll see how we can improve it. We'll take your complaints and see how we can improve upon them. Thank you very much, sir. That will kill the matter. But if somebody comes in and says there are other people that are not complaining about it, what is your grounds? The company can get into trouble. So this is a very sensitive issue and is a topic for now. Organizations to take this very seriously and see how we put proper ones in place. Pepsi had an advert campaign that failed. They called Kendall Jenner for an advert. The young people here know who Kendall Jenner is, okay? And she was there in a photo shoot, and on the other side of the street, they created a protest. And while she was making the shoot, she heard the commotion on that side, so she went there. And she saw the policeman, and she handed a Pepsi to one of the policemen. And the guy took a sip from the Pepsi and he smiled. Then they put out the advert. And people came on them and said, this is the best example of white economic privilege. And it was judged that people were demonstrating over a serious issue. You are tribalizing it with your product. You know, they just turned the story around. And when it became like that, look at what the Pepsi boss came in and he had to apologize. He said Pepsi was trying, the CEO came on and he said Pepsi was trying to project a global image of unity, peace, and understanding. Clearly, we missed the mark. Did you hear that? Clearly, we missed the mark and we apologize. We do not intend to make light of any serious issue. We are removing the content and halting any further rollout. We also apologize for putting Kendall Jenner in this position. That ended that matter. So we're dealing with data, we're dealing with information that are in the blogosphere. We're dealing with a lot of things we're not seeing. But the people that are using them, they are flesh and blood. They have emotion. If you look at modern day AI uh, algorithms that have been put together, the human feeling and all that is put in there. It's not just a robot. You know, it's a robot that can mimic a woman to go through all a circles when she's having hormonal imbalance, when she's going through one blues or the other and whatever. And the robot will behave exactly that way. If you are that and you try to offend that robot, it will mimic that situation and will react possibly the way the woman will react at that time. You know, so a lot of things goes into this and we all be careful. So before launching a product campaign, test it. Show a commercial to a small group of your target audience and prevent the crisis before it starts. So these are just examples. Now let's go into social media governance framework. We have said that social media is good. We have said it as social media is not good. Use it. And while you are using it, you cannot allow it to put you into trouble. So you need to stay in the middle and create a balance. That's what you need to do. And that is why every organization needs the governance framework. Here we have on the screen a very simplistic model. And this takes one from a policy for the formulation, okay? The management and the mitigation plans for crisis situation. So you see the social media policy, they train the personnel on how to work with it, the monitoring of events, then it goes on to creating continuity plan, creating updates, updating it as much as possible. You don't just create a model and let it start. Your model must be dynamic. As you take in new information, you are humanizing it further to get it to the next level. This is a very simplistic one. Up to when you have crisis, crisis management point, there, 
when you have a crisis management, what are your crisis management plans? If you ask the owners of this hotel, they will tell you if there is a fire outbreak right now, what do we do? They will tell you behind that window, when you pull that cloth, there's an emergency door, we will open it and people can file out. They will tell you, do not rush, because when you rush, you may bridge at the door. The leper ones like me, and the more leper ones like our president, we can bridge by the door. So it will tell us, don't just rush, don't stampede. Go one after the other. When you put all those things in place, you are protected. Seat belts are made for people to use in their cars. That doesn't mean we did not have people who wore seat belts and died. Some people wore their seat belts and they still died. But you must put the, the vehicle system has been built such that when you put it, statistics shows that a lot of people were saved, putting in place what is supposed to be done. Wearing that seat belt will protect you to a large extent. It doesn't mean you will not die. Anyhow, some people will still die with it. So let's put these things in place. This is a very simplistic one. I have some more complex ones. There are so many of them on the internet and you can pick what works. But I decided to talk more about this one. And um, I like it because I made this. You know, we see a lot of things on the internet. You take different people's material and you put your own thing. If you say social media governance framework on the internet right now, you will see 200, or you will not see this. I made this. And when we put, out, put it out today, it becomes another one. It joins everything. So beginning from the definition of scope, it is very important that you define what is and what is not to be covered by your governance model. You must be sure to call out specific social media channels along with the policies and the guidelines that relate to each of them. Then depending on your business and organizational need, so companies may decide to have a co common governance model for their internal and external customers, you know, the customer-facing communities, while others may decide to keep the two separate. So it depends on what works for you. Are we dealing with a church? Are we dealing with an institute? Are we dealing with a government? Are we dealing what level of governance to, you know, what works for you? You must sit down and define a scope. Know how far you want to go in your governance structure. That is one. Then the next thing will be the frequency and process for updates. Given that social media is evolving at the pace of light, which is true, the governance model will need regular reviews and updates. You must create tweaks. As far back as 20, 2001, I stumbled into that in my computer. We're doing a project for Shell, and they wanted us to, those days we used to have HSC, you know, safety manual. But they said they no longer wanted safety manual. I'm talking of 2001. You create what they call the HSC MS manual. Your HSC manual should involve your management now. It should integrate. And we were working on all those things. And I saw it recently in my computer. And I was looking through, and I saw my signature on that page. And on that, there's a page, after the front page, you say this particular whatever was put together on this date. And the next date of review is three months from now, you put it there. So that three months from now, if there's need to update anything, you come in there and update and put the date and remove that page, put the fresh one with update done or so, so and so date, the next update, it's very important. If not, your model will become obsolete. The motel will just, you know, will be useless after a while. That is why you must frequently update your model. Next is the branding guideline. For large or very big companies, the broad variety of social media channels makes it very important to clearly call out the branding guideline for your external channels. 
you must be able to create a, 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 your own branding method. Anywhere you go and you see IIM, what is the first thing you see? You'll see this color tone. This is IIM. If you see IIM document that is not like this and it's coming in maybe purple, then you want to start asking questions that is this from IIM? They have been able to build their own brand color. Some people, it may be tone. MTN is yellow. You will never see purple MTN. You must put all this in place such that when you put out anything, nobody puts out a purple MTN. You can't put a green MTN out. It will be conflicting with glue. Is it green or lemon now? It will be confusing with, I mean, conflicting with glue. So you must create your own branding guideline. The same principle that governs the design of all the external facing communication, such as websites, internet, should be applied to official social channel. Okay? This will include, but not limited to, brand templates for your social media channel. You will have your channel template. If you open a page of LOG, it should show LOG. If you see another page that is not showing all those tools, then maybe it's a scammer's page. You know, so whatever is facing the community, you must make sure you accommodate them. Your logo, your color palette, your typography. You see, some company will say anything that comes up from us must be font twelve. The text must be area. The spacing must be one point five. If you see anything that is normal spacing or that is less than that, is not from them. You must carve out your own niche and see what works for you. Next is training and education. The solid governance, governance model should have plenty of educational resources for the employees. This should include training on responding to customer feedbacks, both positive and negative. Typically, if the customer supports an HR, and an PR organization, it is them, it is the customer support and PR organizations that are tasked with the responsibility of responding to customer feedback, like I mentioned earlier. You know, it's not just anybody because you work for LOG by the way, LOG is my company. Okay. You work for LOG and somebody says something on the internet about LOG, and the first thing that comes to your mind is to respond. You may respond and lose your job if we have a governance policy in place. It is not the MD. There are specific people. Unless they say it is the policy says it's the MD that responds. And even the people that are to respond, they have been trained. That is when we are, that's why we have institutes like IIM. You send them to some of the courses organized here, and you'll be trained on how to gauge emotions, your sensibility, how to show empathy to your external facing. Uh, to people on your external facing channel, you know? When you put all that in place, you will be building a solid and robust social media governance uh, platform. Also, approval process. You know, uh, the model should clearly call out what approval processes are in place for employees to engage in social media. If you go to nations, whenever we go to places like Dubai, there are sites you cannot visit. Their own governance framework does not allow you to go to certain sites. You see us struggling with a lot of our internet. You can't do a lot of things. That's what they want. That is what works for them. So you put it, they, they put it in place and everybody falls in. So you must look at who approves what. You know, what is the process for getting approval for an official account? You must put all that in your model. Lastly, continuity planning. It is very important to have a continuity plan, which covers not only how accounts are set up, but how the accounts will be transitioned to a new owner, if need be. You are an employer. I am an employer of labor. I have hired so many people in my lifetime, and so many people have left me in my lifetime. But if I have only working for me, as the HR manager, if he leaves, what happens? 
Is there a continuity plan for the next person to come in and begin to behave like Mule? Or the next person will come in and start from scratch. And in the process of starting from scratch, we may be exposed. We throw us into a litigation that we may not come out of. So it's important you have continuity planning in your social media government. This is just one model. There are so many other frameworks. Some frameworks will not joke with the legal aspects, legal issues. How do we handle them? Some institution will not joke with data security. What happens to them? You know, so they will bring in consultants that will manage this. They will bring in the legal people that will make this impact. So different framework for different people, for different groups. But it is important to put in place a social media governance framework that will help you work with the society without getting into trouble. Continue to make money without buying trouble that money cannot get you out of. So this is very important. There are so many. You know, it's not one size fit all. It's the one that works for your people. I basically are giving us synopsis into what goes into all. So I will be concluding. Setting out well-researched policies, guidelines, educational resources to guide the employee to successfully represent the company in the social media activities must just be the panacea for averting potential organizational crisis. It is very important. You need to put them in place to protect you. Then rather than policing your employees, start with a robust governance model that will empower them with the right resources and training to become successful advocates of your brand. Thank you very much. Wonderful. I'm sure we all enjoyed that uh, act very well. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. You see, I should tell you that the delivery was superb. Thank you very much. Another round of applause. That's a very good one. Let me step on here. A lot of information are out there. And we have to be careful, like we have said. There are some news that that is why you must pause to think, should I put it out? Should I believe this or not? The way the social media is structured, I can sit down here and on my phone, I can create a Twitter purportedly coming from Aliko Dangote. 
and you will see the blue tick to show that that is a verified account. Even though Twitter will see it and take it out eventually, but it can go viral. I can put it, it can put together that and say, I can tweet that, I can tweet it and say, as if Dangote is tweeting it, that everybody thinks I'm rich. You need to check out GDL And I can create another one with another blue tick, purportedly coming from his friend or Ted Ola. And or Ted Ola too will reply in that you better tell them so that they know. Twitter will take it out after five minutes. But people that do not know fake news from <laughs> real news will start sharing. And maybe Gideon Lufui basically wanted to trend. I just want to trend. I have not said the truth. OK? Put it out there. That is why when you see anything, no matter what, the first thing is not to share. The first thing is not to share. The first thing is to sit down. You have your faculties, you have your gumption, God give it free. You need to sit back and ask questions. If you are not sure, wait. There are sites, there are images we see recently people put out and say it's happening at Diobu in Port Harcourt. People are by IBOB and whatever. I had, I, I used to work with one Google app. You just need to take that image and paste it there. And it will bring it out that it was in my three crisis in 2011, when uh, touts were fighting market women. But they would pick, pick it and say, IBOB came to Puerto Rico to kill people. You know, so people do all sorts of things. So it is not for you to see and start sharing. Something happened recently on the 4th of October this year, the whole world was in darkness with, tweet, with uh, Facebook, WhatsApp, and Instagram. The system shut down for like seven hours. And we were all confused. We we're all sending messages and rebooting. Some people had to reinstall the application so many times that day for just seven hours. And they were able to fix it eventually. When they did, Mark Zuckerberg came out and apologized. Well, you know what one mischievous idiot did? He created Mark Zuckerberg's account with a blue tick, and he wrote that, I apologize that, yes, we had a downtown of about, time of about seven hours, and we regret this, that the problem has been solved, but we are going to do another upgrade sometime in October. And uh, the system will be down for 168 hours, seven days. So you need to brace up and prepare for this. And when that came out, a Nigerian celebrity, Moyo Lawa, she's an actress. Moyo Lawa saw it. She's got 1.8 million followers on Instagram. And she decided to share, say, ah, see what I saw. She just reposted it and said, see what I saw. And in less than 30 minutes, 400 people had liked. You know, I mean, 4,000 people had liked it. Okay, 4,000 people had liked, liked her post, and people were sharing, and it was going, and that could go around the world. In 30 minutes, it's gone around the world, but the cable, cable did a check on that post, and it showed that it was not from Matikaba. But you that have shared it, are you going to say, go, 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 my people, that thing I shared was false. That is why on, I belong to over 200 platforms in churches, in different places, and whatever I do. I have zero tolerance for stupid reposts. We can joke, we can do whatever. But when you give information that is false, I come after you. So we must gauge, we must learn to watch out for fake news and see how. There are some, and the, the way some of the social media platforms are being built now. They have a system to flag down those things. When they see them, they flag them. If you go and you're typing and you say, Fidiopilia, Pilia, the system underlines it. There are certain words you type now on Facebook, it 
it will be it will change to red at the underline. I mean, you see one red dot dot underline. They are beginning to look at you. What is it going to write next? Maybe it's a pedophile. They know kids. The young people are the ones using the platform. They don't want you to put it out there. So before you know, they kill it and suspend your account. Or you think the post is gone out, but it did not go beyond your, your you know. So they, some of those things, but then filters that can only filter to a point. Some things will still run. One, use your mind. Two, do not be quick to share. If you are not sure, ask questions. If you are still not sure, still ask more questions, but don't be rushed to share things. Thank you. Okay. Okay, I have a few questions on the internet here. Uh, what do you think a personal social media framework should be? The framework shared seemed to be designed for corporate organization and governmental agencies. What should a personal stock individual framework <laughs> involve and can it be adopted? Good question. Whatever answer we have just given concerning fake information has answered that question partly, okay? When we're talking about governance, it's more for groups, for organization. IIM is a group that is in different parts of the world. There must be a social media governance framework for IIM. LOJ, I have three, four companies under my group. I should have what guides us. But me, as an individual, Gideon Lufui, to answer his question, what will guide me? Your mind, your conscience, your knowledge. When you are reading, know that that thing you are reading, you too could write your own version. So you must be careful. You are only hearing one side of the story. What of the other side you did not hear? It may be incomplete. And the way things appear to us, I was telling a friend a few days back, why do we argue? I have written six and I'm standing here. What I am seeing is six. You all in this class, I have written the six like this. What are you seeing? Nine. Then I tell you all, this is six. And you are all telling me, sir, it is nine. And instead of me to be empathic or to begin to ask what is going on, I'm beginning to throw insults. You all are dumb in this class. How can you say this is nine? Are you blind? Did you go to school? On the social media, you see people fighting over nothing on Twitter. But if you pause to go to the other side, oh, now I see what you're seeing. It's nine from here. Come and see what I'm seeing. It's six. And we can reach a middle, middle ground. A couple of years back, I had a situation. We're talking about what was going on in Nigeria then. And I made a statement that if we do not take time, we may end up having a genocide in this nation. I wrote it and somebody said, do you know what genocide means? That's the wrong use of word. How can there be genocide in Nigeria? And that time, my blood still they hurt still. You know, he tackled me, I tackled him. We were on for like one hour. And different other people were coming in and taking sides. <laughs> Eventually, I left that. You know, but today, I will not do that. That is his own understanding. You just pause back and ask yourself, what is genocide? You can Google. I tell everybody around me, ask Google. You type in the genocide, you see what genocide means. Can it be applied to our situation? In what situation can it be applied to? Then if you think you're right and it's wrong. Let, let someone, someone else do the calling. It's not for you. So that's basically what I'll say. For individuals, 
your good conscience, your knowledge, and your ability to empathize will help you put together your own governance framework that will work for you. Thank you. I can't see any more questions then. Expert. I'm not going to go into that. To Google's variation. I'm not going to go into that. The person asking that you basically just read it up and um, see what you can find. Or maybe uh, Presido can. Um, I'm coming. Maybe, maybe, maybe you can come in with Google variation, but that's, I am not a subject on that. As um, much. Yes. Well, I, will, I want to skip that for now. Okay. I'll, I'll take it off camera with the uh, person. The person. Okay. Awesome. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Odewiki. Um, without taking too much of our time, uh, we're going to be running through a few slides. What we have on the screen is um, a presentation about why we're here today. It is a pre-induction. It is the pre-induction presentation, which will give us an insight into why we're being inducted as members of this group. So I am 
as the Professional Institute is the premier institute that is not only in Nigeria, but across Africa. As a professional institute, this great institute is developed to assist professionals from all walks of life. And like I mentioned during my keynote, uh, uh, my opening uh, stroke uh, welcome speech, data is so important that it's not restricted to any discipline. Whether you're into education, you're into oil and gas, you're in government, you're in marketing, you're in customer service, you're just name it. Every other profession requires adequate data and information management because in the course of your day-to-day -day activities, you generate data and information. In fact, even in this particular session today, lots have been generated. A good number of us will have taken down points from the presentations, from the talk, and so on. So as a professional institute, we're out to ensure that professionals that are tasked with managing data and information are abreast of technology, they are abreast of events and happening, they are in line and in tune with global best practices and so on and so forth. So the international headquarters of the Institute of Information Management is in Denver, Colorado, in the United States of America. And uh, the Institute in Nigeria is registered with the Corporate Affairs Commission. Um, we have um, the acknowledgement of the Ministry of Justice. And, um, we have certification from the Ministry of Education in Nigeria. And as we speak, the IIS uh, bill um, is at the second reading at the National Assembly in Nigeria. So as a professional international institute, we have quite a number of affiliations with different organizations, ranging from public and private, uh, professional bodies, according to you. And because of space and time, we just had these few words being highlighted on the screen. So right now, we're having nine chapters in nine different countries. Um, and we are being at the center of this world. And um, what do we do as a professional institute? As a professional institute, we have what we refer to as our um, core values. And um, this is actually responsible for some of the activities and events that you see the institute churn out from time to time. Um, I'm happy we, we have test we've been having testimony since we started this morning because there's never a dull moment in IIM. That I can assure those that are coming in afresh. There can never be a dull moment. I think, was it two or three days ago, we still had our monthly webinar which was on digital uh, customer care, digital transformation in customer care service management. So as a professional institute, our core values are standards, certification, competence, and research. All these four pillars were responsible for the introduction of IIM as a professional institute. Uh, the technical committee came up with this as a result of the findings that led to the establishment of IIM Africa. Um, and some of those issues are still very much prevalent as we speak now. For example, if you pick two different organizations working within the same industry, the same disciplines, and you ask them about, the, about data and information management processes, you'll be shocked that those two organizations will come up with two different processes. If you pick four, then you're, gonna, you're likely going to get another four different processes within the same sector, within the same field. So that was what led to this very first pillar. As a professional institute, we want to make sure that we're able to standardize data and information management per sector so that there can be uniformity in how data is created, how data is collected, how data is classified, how data is uh, indexed or numbered, how data is stored, how data is protected from you know, security, 
access, and how you share data. Then we're also talking about ultimately how data should be disposed, which is something that is missing in a lot of organizations, most especially in the public sector. It, within the public sector, you um, some of us are familiar with you know, working with those in the public sector. Sometimes when you do pay them a courtesy visit, you find lots and lots of document files, you know, being uh, stored on the shelf, some under the basement, some inside the uh, GMG bags, don't let me call them <laughs> GMG bags. And you know, you just find silos of information everywhere without proper governance over them. So the standard we're talking about is going to help to ensure that if you're in the health sector, the way and manner in which you capture data, you store data, and the template you use, and every other thing will be uniform across board. I remember in 2019, the Institute of Information Management, uh, during the uh, Information Literacy Week, we actually invited all the um, regulatory bodies in Nigeria. Because we believe that the only way this can be enforced is through the regulatory agencies. And unfortunately, those regulatory agencies themselves don't even know or are not even practicing what we're talking about. They have, most of them are even yet to realize their roles and responsibilities in that area, which that particular uh, literacy was able to address. And unfortunately, in 2020, we all uh, we are all aware of what happened. You know, because of the COVID pandemic, we couldn't follow up on that. And hopefully, uh, by next year, we're going to continue on this particular campaign because it's very, very key. Not until when we have the regulatory agencies, you know, helping to come out with templates for those organizations operating within their sector, then things will continue to be the same. Look at the case of um, SIM card registration. I can recollect that my, my, part, uh, my number, I've actually registered it for like three, uh, four or five different times. I've been invited <laughs> to come and register. And I'm sure some of us would have had similar experience. But you can imagine as at the time they came up with this initiative, if NCC are taking the bull by the arm, by you know, presenting a template, that, oh, if you're going to capture uh, subscribers' data, you have to comply with this particular specification. When it comes to storage, whatever device you're going to use to store them has to comply with this. Then when it comes to um, even the personnel that you're going to use, there should be standards. Overseas, you don't just get into any field and just start working. In Nigeria, you find somebody by the roadside doing mean registration. You find somebody by the roadside doing SIM card registration. People that are not trained, they are not certified. Abroad, before you can handle tasks like that, you have to make sure you have the appropriate license. Otherwise, you could be jailed. And that is how important it is. When we talk about personal data, it is something that is very, it is very, very important. Other than for us to just leave it in the hands of every, you know, um, individual that we come across. So that is why, as a professional institute, standards happen to be our first core value. Then when we talk about certification, we're talking about the need to ensure that those personnel have the opportunity of adequately being trained and also become certified. A number of um, individuals uh, during the pre IM survey in the Data Information Records Archives uh, Discipline. Some of the feedback we got from them had to do with the fact that within the organizations, they were not being recognized as professionals. The same way, the kind of recognition that will be accorded an accountant, for example. You know, those in the field of data and information management were not seen as bringing anything to the table. So we, we're able to realize the fact that part of the reasons has to do with the fact that they were not having opportunities to be certified. So they are just seeing them as just the regular worker and not considering. And one other issue is the fact that in most organizations, even up to date, 
Data and information is yet to be regarded as corporate assets. When you ask an individual, what are the assets in the organization? They say, oh, we have a huge building, we have fleets of cars, we have the equipment, we have computers, we have this, we have that, we have furniture, those are assets. Yeah. Forgetting the fact that information is a very important corporate asset. Not handling information properly could bring all those physical assets you're talking about, to bring them down on that means. So then uh, the third pillar, which has to do with competence, we realize the fact that in most organizations that had document controllers, archivists, information technicians, records managers, and so on and so forth, a good number of those individuals in different organizations do not even understand what information management is all about. A good number of them are from different disciplines. Although there's nothing bad coming from a different disciplines, but the most important thing is for you to ensure that now that you are in the field, you, you know you are in line and in tune with the best practices. So we realize the fact that a good number of them needed to be adequately and properly trained, which was why confidence became an issue that we needed to address. Then you will agree with me that there is no organization that, we, that can continue to grow without research and development. So these are the four core pillars as IIM. The essence of creating this all important institute has to do with these four pillars. So what do we do as a professional organization? We provide professional services. And among the professional services being provided by this institute is membership, which is why we're here today. Membership is about ensuring that we're able to get as many professionals as possible on board. The beauty of IA membership is that IA membership is not restricted to any discipline. And like I mentioned earlier, regardless of what you do, even if you are into buying a selling, you need to have information management skills. Going at those days when you are being asked to have computer skills, it has become a norm now. In anything you do, you have to, you must have uh, proficiencies in how to use a computer. But when the information age now, you need to know how to manage data and information. And also good enough in Nigeria now, we have a regulation called the Nigerian Data Protection Regulation, NDPR. It affects all of us. Some of us might be hearing it for the first time. How many of us are hearing it for the first time in the world? NDPR. At least we have some people that are hearing it for the first time. So it means as an organization, if you are dealing with personal data, there are certain um, there, there are certain procedures that you need to put in place. You also need to have policies governing the management of personal data within your organization. For non-compliance, the organization could run into different problems. You could be asked to pay fine, and it could be a sort of reputational damage for your brand. Recently, we had uh, two. Uh, uh, organizations that suffered from this particular regulation. In Nigeria, yeah, the first one was $5 million fine by the organization. The second one, I think that one happened two months ago, we were asked to pay $10 million. So that's to tell you how serious and severe information management is. Some organizations will tell you, oh, that is not our field, that's not what we do. So it doesn't concern us. It concerns each and every one of us. And that is why we have to ensure that our organization Within our organizations, we have all the necessary framework in place that will ensure that people, process, and technology are properly captured and documented. So when we talk about membership, we have different categories, student, graduate, associate, professional, senior professional, fellow, and corporate. Uh, for the um, students, it's from uh, candidates still in school, graduates is for freshers with less than two years of professional experience in any field. Um, associate is for any professional from any field with minimum of two years of experience. Professional is five years minimum. Senior professional is 10 years minimum for any field, from any discipline. Then talking about the fellowship, um, we have professional fellowship and we also have honorary fellowship. The difference is that the highest individual uh, membership grade in IIM is honorary fellowship. That is the highest. But the honorary fellowship is different from the professional fellowship because of the requirements. 
as a professional fellow, you are expected to pay annual subscription. You are expected to attend the mandatory annual um, continuous professional development program, which means like all these monthly webinars that we normally host. You are expected to attend. As you are attending, you are accumulating what we call CPDs, continuous professional development points. Then you're also expected to attend other professional training programs that span beyond just one hour, maybe a two-day program, four-day program. All of these activities would help you to accumulate your CPDs. And the last but not the least is the corporate membership, which is open to any organization that is still registered in the corporate access commission. Then there are lots of benefits. Because this is very, very key and very, very important. Lots of benefits, you know, for you to be part of this movement. The very first one is there are lots of like, um, you know, it's an opportunity for you to boost your profile. Those of us that are going to be inducted today, after today now, even from this all now, you can start changing your profile on social media and adding FII in there. You want, I want you to try this out. When you get on LinkedIn, don't put anybody's name there. Don't put FII. You will see a lot of I fellows across the group from different countries. You can put SPMIIM for senior professional. You get to see them there. So you are joining the league after your election today. And that is going to be a boost to your profile. Because sincerely, sincerely, we've had multinationals in Nigeria asking IIM to submit lists of people for employment within our network. And it's simply because of the fact that we believe that the best of the best are within the network. <laughs> we also have the opportunity of learning best practices, networking with peers, not only in Nigeria, but across the globe, because we are all on the same platform. In fact, we've seen different you know, situations playing out. People networking, connecting, exchanging jobs, projects, working on projects together, and doing so many things, even invitation abroad and so on. Then um, your accredited membership is an emblem of recognition for your professional achievement, qualification, experience, expertise, and so on and so forth. You also have business stroke um, employment opportunities like I mentioned earlier on. Market and business development opportunity. This is another wonderful thing. Every month, at the last Friday of every month, what do we normally have? Who can say it out? Business Connect. Every Friday of the month, we usually have the IIM Business Connect. We find people from different parts of the world, people coming out with their products and services. And before you know it, you're able to connect and um, do more sales. Then there are other professionals coming up on the same platform to help you develop your business for free. Because we have the give and the takes uh, session. So during the give, if you have anything you want to share with members, you have the opportunity to showcase it. If you have things you want to sell at the discounted rate for members, you know, things like that. Those are the things that are being handled during the, uh, the give uh, session. Then taking it's when you have issues, when you have requests, you can bring it to the platform. Oh, am my son is looking for admissions. So, so we have anyone in the house that can connect, that can do this, or I have social products. I want to get it out there. Who can help me, you know, to put it out there in the social media space and so on and so on. Then knowledge and best practices, this you can be less assured. The international opportunities means as a member of the institute, any day, any time we're having any program in any part of the world, as an accredited member, you are entitled to come to the institute and say, Institute, I need um, I need a letter there. I need invitation to attend the next test, United Kingdom program, US program, Australia program, and so on and so forth. Then my magic opportunity, like I explained earlier on. Then we also have opportunities for members too that want to work with IIM. They have training, certification, and membership. As a member of the institute, you may say, oh, I have a very huge network. I can bring people to IIM to come and join IIM. If you want to do that, then we advise you to become a coordinator. As a coordinator, you're not just bringing people on board. You're bringing them on board. And there's a way IIM is compensating you by the people they are bringing on board. 
The same is applicable to training too. If you bring on board training programs, there's a way I get information to all of the membership departments will explain to you. Then um, you have the opportunity of professional certificate, be certified professional. We have different professional uh, certifications. And then um, recently we introduced points-based certification. The points-based certification is a, a program developed by the Institute to help professionals you know, to fast track their certification process. Because the regular certification process will take a minimum of two years before you can attain the master certification. But with the point-based certification, you can easily get there with your qualification, other certification you already acquired, and your IA membership will give you between 15 to 25 points. It's actually for you to be qualified, you need a minimum of 40 points. If you have between 40 and 49, you're going to be qualified as an IMP1 certified professional. Then if you have between 50 and 60, uh, 59, you have IMP2 and so on and so forth. But do you know one thing? The fact that you are a member of the institute, because uh, we have four different, um, four different um, areas for evaluation. The very first area is, are you a member of the Institute of Information Management? Your qualification. So if you have to find in four places, you have one.
Hello, we can't hear you. Hello. Can you hear us now? Hello. Yes, I just come up now. Okay. So thank you, sir. Organizations are struggling. They are struggling with data management, record management, information management. They don't know what to do. They don't know where to start. And in some organizations, you see them keeping some files. And you ask them, these files are old. What are you doing with them? They'll tell you, I just in case, you can never tell. You might say, I'll do it for them. That is, they are speaking from, um, uh, from the perspective of somebody that is not well informed when it comes to information management. Because I remember in 2000 and, 2008, we had this education program in Nigeria facilitated by um, one of our international partners, A, in the US. And the um, EMEA director that facilitated that section, when he got into the class and he was to define information management, you know, we had professionals from different industries in uh, attendance in the financial sector, oil and gas, and so on. And he defined information management as throwing things away. And in the end, we were just looking at ourselves what kind of definition is this? I've never come across this. But if you look at it critically, your ability to be able to throw things away is the information management. Um, we had a program in Nogot in um, Enugu, and it um, was a charity program. And I was one of the, I happened to be the vice president of that particular foundation. And other board members, I think about two or three board members, you know, they had similar uh, issues. In the area of um, you know um, handling data on their phone. When I say data, I'm not talking about network data now. I'm talking about all those conversations you receive from the group you belong to that people send to you, they share to you. Because three different people from different places, from north, from east, they were having similar problems. I was like, what's happening? And they see me as a techie person, so they they kept coming to me. Uh, please, I'm having interviews. I can't do this. I can't do that. At the end of the day, I realized the fact that they had poor space management on their phones. So you can see how this affects you directly. You have, you're carrying a phone right now. You need to be able to manage information properly and adequately. Because whether you like it or not, somebody will send you an attachment. They'll send you, a, they'll send you videos. They'll send images to you. They'll send documents to you. They'll send different kinds of materials to you. So if you as a person, just like the question somebody asked the other time that the framework doctor gave to us, can, I, can he apply it on the personal note or whatever? You can always borrow a link from such framework and develop something that would work for you as a person. Because if you don't take all these steps, it will end up putting you in a situation that is not palatable. So in order to do that, you could say, okay, on a weekly basis, you want to be checking your repository, your, your storage on your phone, you try to sift out what you have there, things that are relevant, things that are no longer relevant, audio, you know, all these prayers, some things they send to people. Before you know it, your phone, no matter the space, it's just a matter of time, get filled up. I remember uh, not too long ago, something happened to a woman that traveled from Nigeria to the US. The woman had successfully you know, being granted access at the port of entry. She has successfully been granted access. They've checked her passport and every other thing. And as she was just passing by, the immigration officer just called her back. Because the woman was having um, a big brown envelope. And the, the woman was asked, what do you have with that um, envelope? Flats. It doesn't matter if there was any bulky inside of it. I know that it's really, it's just a check. By the time she brought out the check, it became an issue because they asked her to do the credit. So it was a check. And somebody actually gave to her to help give to the person's um, daughter abroad, schooling abroad. So they start, they took, the next thing, you know, one thing about some of these uh, developed clients is that once you have been found guilty, or maybe you have infringed on a particular law, they will keep digging deep into you as a person. 
Et là, là and you know you know have to love it's not an excuse because they found that on our phone do you know that this woman she was lucky that she was, they, she was eventually deported she could have been in prison over there so you can imagine she put it to, to in quotes now simple situation let that into that and one thing about our record now is that no matter what now that will remain on our record for life Anytime she's going to apply for visa, that thing will always pop up. You understand? But not just paying attention to something. It might be minute, it might be small. And that's why we say that the, 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 the step between life and death is just one step like this. One small information can save the, gener the entire generation. You can imagine somebody coming in 2019 and saying that in 2020 there will be COVID. You understand? A lot of people will have been prepared for it. That is the power of information. And that is why we all need to have information skills. Forget about what you are doing. Even if you are buying and selling, you need it to empower yourself. Because that is what will even give you competitive advantage over the next person that is competing within that same business with you. So every business or program will address well-defined objectives, which will add value either directly the bottom line or towards the achievement of the organization's goals and objectives. There's nothing you get involved in your life. There's a reason why you are doing it. If you are going to a business, you want to make profit, yes or no? You want to grow. So the fact that your business goal is already established, it means you need data to actualize it. Because with data now, you can do an audit. The internet has opened us up to a lot of opportunities that you can leverage on and become an overnight multimillionaire. So even as a service provider, for you to, to service your customers, you need quality data. If you don't know how your customers are feeling about your product, you may not need to improve on that product. Then if you have series of products and services, are you able to evaluate all these, uh, all these products and services and able to see the one that is actually bringing money into your bank account? The one that is just taking money from you and you're not getting anything from. All of these insights you can only have when you have proper information governance in place. Then we also talk about profit too. Anytime we talk about making um, money in business or making profit, it's not just about the, the, the volume of sales that you make alone. You also need to, you know, there's this, um, there's this, should I call it slang or I should call it, it's common in governments. They will say they are blocking loopholes. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? They are blocking loopholes in, um, in, in governance. So when you block the loopholes, it means whatever you have will be enough to do whatever thing that you want to do. If you're making all the money, and you have a lot of loopholes here and there, at the end of the day, all the profit you are making is going down. The way. So in order to avoid that, you need quality data and information that will help you to guide all those loopholes so that you can maximize whatever profit you're making. Then when we talk about um, socials now, your social responsibilities, you want to ensure that the way you are serving your customer we see you as somebody that is carrying out the business legitimately. You are not cutting corners. You are not trying to do people. You are not trying to, you know, play smart on anybody. And when it comes to their emotions, you care about them. You know, you are concerned about what happened to them and so on and so forth. So, information management uh, programs must manage your additional information so that it is timely. Because sometimes when you don't, when you are unable to access information as I went needed, it becomes useless. You can imagine having a court case and they're asking you to present a particular document. You couldn't find it. At the end of the day, the judge will pass his uh, verdict and it could be against you. Then if you now find the document later on, will it be useful again? So any, any information that is not timely, it's not useful. And it also has to be accurate. Just like coming to this place now, somebody that's coming from Lagos, they say, come to 
I am in the ocean for that court. Nothing like uh, the area in Port Harcourt, nothing like the street address and everything. It's Port Harcourt, the, 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 the venue. Uh, so it has to be accurate, it has to be complete, it has to be cost effective, it has to be accessible. This one is very, very common. A lot of us here, we have lots and lots of information that we could leverage on in our organizations, in our homes, in our businesses. But we are not taking advantage of those businesses. Some of the times when you want to market any products, or service. The, in fact, the first line of people you are supposed to market to are people that are familiar with your brand. And some of us are visitors registered there. How many of us do make use of the visitor register? From the visitor register, you can send broadcasts to them, you can do so many things. Do you know that some people, before they will even purchase or buy your product, they, they will need to hear about it like three, four different times. So, all those information inherent within the organization, we need to be able to harness and be able to tap into them for us to be able to achieve some of these things we're talking about. Because those information, if you are not using information to your advantage, it will work against, against you. Working against it does not necessarily mean it will bring you out there on social media. Alone. But in terms of storage, you are keeping something that has no value. You are keeping an asset that is not contributing anything to the bottom line. Maybe on the server, you are paying for storage. And on that storage, you, all the, all the um, information you have there, they have no value to you. So why would you want to continue to pay monthly subscription for the storage that is not adding anything to the bottom line? So you want to, have, you want to avoid that. Then we talk about uh, control and pension of the growth of records and information. I talked about that earlier on. Because when you talk about um, disposition of information and records, if you don't have control over that, your storage or your phone will get filled up. If you are just keeping everything as that company, get this up. So you have to be able to have control over that. Then uh, improve efficiency and productivity. Um, assimilate new record management technology, ensure that in nice mitigation risk. So all of these things, proper information management will help you to achieve in your organization. Then there are certain set of information we call vital records or vital information. How many of us have been able to identify them among all the information that we have? Vital information are those information within your business that if anything should happen to them, it could lead to the end of the business or your company could land into a legal um, into a legal matter that could you know, result into the, your company becoming bankrupt. You don't want that to happen. So vital records should, uh, or vital information should be identified and be stored separately. You don't store it where you store all that records. Even some vital records, you might even take them to banks to keep because of their importance. There was a particular organization somewhere in Lake Lagos. When they were setting up that organization, they said they told them, they said, you people need to have um, records and information units. And their management was like, we're into downstream. That's not our business. We don't manage data, we don't manage information. It's not none of us. We already have IT department. Do you know what happened to them? They got a facility somewhere in Niger Delta area. And before they could say they're crossing, the documentation for the property disappeared in the organization. And that was how the facility, the community, the community sent the hacking, and they had nothing you know, to buttress their funds that belonged to them. Do you know, it was shortly after that period, they contacted IIA, and they said all the employees that we must get needed to be trained, and that they were in the process of setting up um, a department that was managing their costs for them. So you can imagine, fire brigade approach, we are, it's common in Africa. We always wait for something bad to happen before we take the necessary actions. We need to be more proactive. You find a very big pothole on the road. Um, the local government people will be driving there every day and night. But the day a petrol tanker will fall there and scores of people will be killed. The following day, by the time you get there, that portal will do it. What will happen to it? It will have filled it. It will have filled it. What about the lives that have been lost? 
you can't get them back. So we need to be more proactive. And the only way we can do that is by having a call position. It's also, it's also support better decision making. I will say that the problem in Nigeria, we keep saying it, is not corruption. The problem in Nigeria is not corruption. Corruption is the result. Do, do we get it now? It's like input and output. Because if you say, oh, you want to fight, uh, uh, you want to fight corruption, you want to do this. I remember, I think about five or six years ago, I, I had an extensive press interview. No, no, it was 2015 when this administration was coming in. And I was like, when they were saying that ah, they were coming to fight corruption. And I told them, I said, look, you cannot fight corruption without recourse to proper information management. And years after, you know, there was a day Facebook reminded me of that particular uh, interview. And I saw it because the truth is that for you to make any decision, you need quality information. I'm not saying, I'm not just saying you need information. I'm saying you need quality information. You could have information that is that doesn't have value. Okay, in Nigeria to arrive at okay, education is having 40 something billion. How did they come about healthcare? We have a uh, 50 something. People will just sit down somewhere and come up on some figures and say this is the budget for you. With that, you cannot achieve anything. There's, a, uh, there's this uh, saying that garbage in, garbage out. If you put in a fictitious data, you get a fictitious result. What government should have done would have been similar to what, I'm not campaigning for anybody here, but what Lagos State did when Tinubu became the governor. That is what Nigeria government needs to do. What did he do? When he came in at first, the first thing he did was to employ scores of uh, graduates to go out there on the field with questionnaires to get information from people, different areas. What are your pain points? What issues are you having? What do you want improved? What these are that? All the transformation you are seeing is a blueprint for a very long time. And even if somebody that is how will I put it? Somebody that is clueless becomes a Lagos state governor. He would have things to do because he's outlining there for him. He's not going to think about the next project. All these things are already been adopted. That's not for me, for you. For government to have any impact in this country today, there is correct information. What correct information? What is correct information? It's not the number of people. That our uh, education is coming out every year in terms of graduates, so that you can prepare and project that in social number of years, we need social number of positions to be able to accommodate all these graduates. But the reverse is the case. Not until when we go back to data and information management, nothing is going to happen. Although the Ministry of Communication and Digital Economy they are doing a lot. And I think if we can continue like that, we will achieve more. So it's also have to foster professionalism in running your business. By the time you're managing data and information well, your customers will respect you. Even your peers, they will respect you because they know you are in control. Because any information that you have is just like a car that does not have a brick. If you are driving a car that doesn't have a brick, what's going to happen? It will crash. So it also helps you to reduce your operating costs. So on that note, that is the end of do we have any questions? Any question before we? Thank you very much,
But he's
On behalf of all other inductees in this area, Thank you. 
you are performing during our guests, our guest speaker. So I, then I was busy, I wanted to ask you one question, okay. but then the question will get an answer. But I want to appreciate you, sir. That was a well detailed presentation. Now, one thing I want to get, get more correct uh, questions for because it was implicit. Even uh, someone from technology school listens, would be able to understand. And there are two things that uh, is involved when it comes to lecturing. You know, some have the knowledge, but they don't have the impact. While some have, you know how to accept it, that you understand, even without being your area of special So, sir, I want to say thank you very much. So, everyone, thank you uh, to everyone. And uh, I want to say, for those of us who are coming, back to our respective groups as we're doing during the day. And some of us that are in the back of well, maybe after uh, seven o'clock. No, 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 nothing is happening. But there's some this uh, fish. Yeah, we have it for that one. Yeah, I, I was following it because that was what I think. And I realized that uh, yeah, there's fish. It's a fish. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for that one. Thank So those of you who have not yet been done, don't book your flight now. Again, the team comes. November. On the 18th of next month, too, we will be working with the city. That will build on CBD. So just put it in the gate and you will be seeing the position for that one. There's no theory that has no information. After the money, this is what 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 is we move to the restaurant. We turn our hands. There's something for the president. Okay. All the coordinators here, please. They go lock down one and a half. I said, we want to see that, please. We can now assign that. So please take note of that. And be free to interact. And make work with everybody here. A couple of conferences like this, this network can no more. You can do some business. No one more person can take the life. So, that's what we are doing ourselves. On this note,
with our president. Able coordinators, please. Can we have our teachers? Just wait a few minutes. I'm showing sixty to ninety seconds. The light will be back. This is a minus in this place. They are supposed to have light. Thank you. 
All the fellows in the house. And you're not fellow in the house. Can we have all the guests join us, please? Yes. Everybody this time. Everybody. <laughs>
Have your cat for you. Sit down. Continue as the move of the 